All right, what's going on YouTube? Coming at you guys with a Agumond deck profile. Um, I think this deck hasn't really been in the conversation for potential best deck. Uh, I think Gabu Bond and Jessmon definitely get a lot of the credit for that distinction right now in EX1 and in BT6. But with a lot of the tools that Agu Bond received both from the starter deck and from EX1, I think this deck can compete for that top best deck slot very easily. This deck has a lot of good matchups, it's very aggressive, and it holds its own against any deck in the format. So I think if you are not sure what to play, you don't want to be a Bond of Friendshipper or a Jessmoner, definitely give this deck a really solid consideration. And I think this build in particular is really strong and is going to be a solid baseline for what the deck is going to be moving forward into the format. So starting off with the babies, you pretty much only have two choices. You can run Demi Merimon or Koromon. Uh, in any amount of either two, you can run 4-1 or 4-1, or you can split them 3-2 somehow. Uh, me personally, I run three Demi Merimons and two Koromons just because I value the DP gain with the um, promo Greymon more than I value the draw, just because I want to live those security checks and be able to be more aggressive but an argument can be made either way and it's ultimately ultimately up to preference all right moving on to your agumons your level threes we run three bt6 agumon or sorry four bt6 agumon four uh gallant monster deck agumon four agumon from ex1 and we run for our tech agumons um two bt1 agumons one uh, promo Agumon and one Agumon expert. So uh, the BT6 Agumon is pretty self-explanatory. You have to run four of those because it gives you the security attack plus one with your bond and you gain the memory on your ties. And just to know that does work on all turns. So if you hit a tie in security while this is on your board, you will gain a memory. So you get like a kind of pseudo hammer spark effect, which could pass the turn over to you and might be good. Uh, this Agumon can be the promo Agumon that gives plus 2,000 to Greymons. Um, I think they're fairly interchangeable. This one uh, gives plus 2,000 DP to any Digimon, and since you run um, Agunimons, and also the uh, Agumon Bond of Bravery itself is not a Greymon, it gives the plus 2,000 to those, which could be relevant. But the um, promo Agumon, which gives plus 2,000 DP to Greymons, can let you swing over Digimon, since this one is only when you attack a player, and the other one is just plus 2,000 flat. So it can come up in different situations. Um, I would say playtest to see which one you prefer, but for me, I think this one is fine, and it was also cheaper since it comes in the starter deck. So I'm not going to lie, that's definitely a reason for me to play it over the other one. Uh, Agumon from EX1, Inheritable, is when you attack, you can uh, search top three of your deck for a Tamer or another Agumon, and I believe that includes Agumon Bond. Uh, Agumon in its name, yep. So this card is pretty good value, lets you get your searches off pretty more consistently, a lot more consistently than this one, since this one you can get it off multiple times if you live. So I like this card a lot, and as far as Agumons go, it's probably one of the better ones you can play in the deck. Uh, for our tech Agumons, I run two of the look at top five to add a tamer. I think it's just fine for consistency, considering that you really need to see Tai in this deck in order for it to make it work, because that's kind of the whole point of your deck. And um, then there is the on play delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 3000 DP or less. Um, this is kind of a tech for the um, Purple Skull Greymon from EX1, which I'll show you guys later. And also, I think just uh, being able to delete a level 3 on play is something that opponents may not see coming. So I think it's interesting for that. And, you know, we just play one. So if you see it, it's fine. And if not, it's just another Agumon fodder. I mean, you can run any other Agumon over this, but I like this one and I want to try it out. And finally, uh, one Agumon expert. I actually hate this card because you can't bond over it, and that comes up so often for me for some reason, where I'm stuck with this as my only, only Agumon and I can't do anything with it. But I will say it does have merit from being able to get any Agumon out of your trash, including Bond of Bravery. So, you know, if they check it in security, you can Agumon Expert to get it back out, 
or uh, it's just another on play Agumon to get back with Skull Greymon. So you can Skull Greymon, it pops itself, uh, bring back Agumon Expert, and then bring back another Agumon from your trash back to your hand. So that's just a lot of value off of that card. So I think for that alone, it probably merits its slot, but you can definitely justify taking it out. Um, moving on to level fours. The promo Greymon, security attack plus one, if you have an Agumon in your heritable, is by far the best card in the deck. Like, zero questions, this card carries you so much. Um, 5,000 DP, but then with uh, Demi Marimon, you can go to 6,000. With uh, Agumon, you can go to 8,000. And then with Lightning Jets, you can go to 10,000, three checks. If you get that combo off, on you know, your first attack of the game and you see all three checks resolve you're in a really really good spot to win a lot of decks can't come back from that type of regression so early for geo Greymons from the starter deck security and then it plays itself and on play delete one of your opponents digimon with 4000 dp or less even just hard playing this from your hand for six comes up and i think it's fine uh, you can digivolve it on top of one of your agumons for two and then use marcus to gain a memory it's a fine card. I think as far as Greymons go, this is probably the, bless the best one you can play in this deck since it makes your security a lot more defensive and it gives you uh, aggressive Greymon options in your level 4s, which you need in this deck. And then finally for hybrids, I run 3 Agunimon and 1 Burning Greymon. So this was supposed to be 4 Agunimons, but I couldn't find my 4th one. So I ended up just running a f random Burning Greymon just because I wanted 4 hybrids. And then... This card actually kind of came up in situations where I felt it kind of justified itself as a one of, uh, just because on your turn, it gains 3000 DP. That's the effect. So it swings for nine. That's pretty good. It hits over blockers, which a Goonimon can't do. And if you say you have a stack with this Agumon and Darien Marymon underneath it, all of a sudden it becomes nine, 10, 11, 12, and then you throw a Lightning Joust on it, it becomes 14, two checks. I think that's pretty good. So when it comes up, it's nice. Uh, obviously, it's three to Digivolve instead of two, like a Goonimon, and that is a really big negative considering kind of the point of these hybrids is to allow you to get that last attack in to go for game. And having to squeeze out that extra memory to get this card off can be a huge detriment. But I think that it is interesting as one of. I think if you have the four Goonimon, you play the four Goonimon. It is just a better card simply because of the one list to digivolve and kind of the job of the card is just to swing for game so um this card is funny uh you can definitely take it out for the fourth agunimon though this is just kind of a me thing and then a uh, new ex1 card skull greymon this card is surprisingly like super good and valuable in this deck so it has security plus one and in, like inherent and then it has 8000 dp and the effect is at the end of your attack, you delete this Digimon, and then on deletion, you can play an Agumon from your trash onto your field suspended. So this allows you to get in an aggressive security attack plus one swing, and then revive an Agumon to set up a bond later. So you can threaten bond with an Agumon, or you can bring back one of your on-play Agumons and get value off of it like that. I think this card is very interesting. Um, your other um, level five options would be either the Metal Greymon from BT1, the secret rare that is security plus three but lose fight memory when attacking. That card is really good in Bond Mirrors because it's so big and so aggressive and it does so many checks at once that it's hard to come back from if you can resolve it early. But of course the problem is that you have to pass over five memory so the attack is the only thing you're going to be able to do that turn unless like you do play a card beforehand and then you're passing over the full five memory to your opponent which can be a lot and maybe not worth three checks you got off especially if it dies in security and you don't get off all three checks but it is a powerful card that is worth considering and then besides that there is the um aldemon which is security plus one and then if you have a hybrid in your stack as one of your evolution sources it gets plus four thousand dp so it becomes eleven thousand dp security attack plus one on its own if you have an agunimon or a burning greymon in the stack and then uh if you're playing um like more hybrids like maybe you're playing um flamemon or yeah, I guess just flame on and maybe more burning grays. So like four Guni, two burning grays, a couple flame ons and some Aldemons. And it's like a pseudo hybrid package that allows you to have a really strong level five that can swing for a lot of checks on its own and is very strong. But it does take up a lot of space. And I think with the new EX1 stuff, that's not really a route you want to go. 
I think from all your level five options, it's either two school Greymons or just don't play level fives. So that's my opinion. And finally, we have Bond of Bravery. I only play three just because, unlike Bond of Friendship, uh, this card you can't really just slam out and like start like attacking and like get three attacks off. Your opponent kind of needs to have a Digimon on board in order to get the when attacking and um, on deletion trash in effect trash security effect so you can't just bond it into an open field it's definitely a mistake i have made because i'm used to friendship you can just bond whenever and swing three times and it's good this one is a lot more conditional you don't need to see it to win unlike bond of friendship where you do like you do need to see friendship to win the game this one honestly this greymon you need to see this greymon to win the game this one is almost kind of like a backup plan slash like backbreaker but as long as you see this card then you can definitely win the game without ever having to see this card. So I just reduced it down to three just because you don't always want to see it in your hand. It can get a little clinky. All right, uh, moving on to options. I run four Atomic Blaster, three Gaia Force, and three Lightning Joust. Uh, Atomic Blaster is like one of the most goaded like destruction options in the game. This card is so nuts It can wipe boards on its own for no reason or just it clears also just any level 5 Basically since they're all like 8,000 or less except for like a select few This card is absolutely insane value. You don't play any less than 4 And then finally I split my Gaia Forces and my Lightning Joust 3-3. You can go 4-4 four Force 2 Joust or if you're really feeling aggressive, you can go for Joust and th two Force. But I like 3-3. Three, three. Um, Lightning Joust, especially in the early game, when you're both at 5 security, is absolutely insane. Since, like I said, it lets your Greymon hit for 3 checks and like up to 9k, or even, I think it can hit 10k. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yeah, it can hit to 10k, 3 checks, which is very, very strong, especially turn 2 if you can resolve it. So I think Lightning Joust is definitely a key card in the deck that lets you be super aggressive and puts a lot of decks behind in tempo if they can't keep up. And finally for Tamers, we have four Tai Kamiyas. Uh, you have to play four Tai because that's kind of the point of the deck. We play two Marcus. It's a memory setter. You can't bond unless you have three memory, so you kind of need to see these. And also, well, you do run Greymons, so Greymon... Um, Geo Greymon and Skull Greymon can all resolve Marcus's gain a memory effect, which can come up. Gaining a memory is always good, especially if you see both Marcus's and you're getting two memory off one attack, which lets you extend your plays pretty well. And finally, where some people run a third Marcus, I instead run one Gravity Crush. I think this card is really funny, especially since it lets you a Goonie for game and people wouldn't expect it. So let's say you are at three memory from uh, having a Marcus and Tie on the board. You go into Bond, you swing, delete one of their Digimon, trash the security. Uh, let's say you have the BT6 Agumon underneath, so you, two checks, so that's three security checks. And then you're at zero memory, so normally your opponent expects you to just have to end your turn there. But then you just hit him with the Gravity Crush, gain two memory, and a Goonie for game. Uh, it's just like a funny way to end the game. Uh, this can very, very easily be a third Marcus or a fourth Gaia Force or a fourth Lightning Joust. This is just like a tech card. Um, if I like it just because I like to have the option just to a Goonie out of nowhere. Um, I did play a lot of blue, so I'm used to Hammer Spark Lobo, so this is kind of the same idea. But like I said, you can easily take that out for pretty much any other card you want. All right, so that's pretty much the base of the deck. Uh, as far as techs go, there are definitely some different ways you can take the deck for techs. Um, where did I put those cards? So one of your tech options that I see a lot of people playing, and I was playing myself, but I recently took me out, is Mechanorimon. This card is really insane in the mirror because it says no to Agunimon. It says no to Geogramon, and if your opponent is stuck where they don't have ties and they have to play Agumon Rush, this card says no to every single Agumon. Uh, there are definitely situations where the opponent just has to straight up waste an Atomic Blaster or even a Gaia Force on just Mechanori to try to clear it. So this card, if you play, I think you play two, and you would probably take out like uh, the Burning Gray and the Agudimon to fit them in. I think this card has a lot of value. It's less good against um, 
bond of friendship because they can just bot deck it and then this card doesn't do anything but it is still a floodgate in the early game if they can't see their bond of friendship fast enough so mechanorimon definitely a high value consideration as a 2f tech uh, other techs that you can run that I think are interesting is um, Magnetramon. I see a lot of people fitting two of these cards into their deck as well as a defensive option. Since this deck runs a lot of like uh, options for that can trigger insecurity, like uh, Atomic Blaster, Gaia Force, and I guess technically Geogramon also fits the bill. Um, you can Magnetramon to recover to and then hope you hit one of these in your security and then that way you can live a turn or you can do the combo where if you're at two security or less you can bond to go to zero and then your bond won't leave your field at the end of the turn because of tie effect says if you have uh, I think it's less than one security. Let me read the exact wording. Uh, then if you have one or more security cards, delete that Digimon at the end of the turn. So if you're at zero security after you bond, your bond doesn't die at the end of the turn. And then if you Magna Digimon after that, you can recover two, but the effect to not destroy itself already resolved, so your bond still stays on the field. So that's an interesting combo you can get off to like surprise your opponent with a bond that won't die and then still have an extra two um, security for defense. So I think Magna Digimon has some value just based off of that. And that's really the only reason you would play this card. It's just kind of like a consider it like playing two blockers, right? So for 11 memory, you play two blockers. So it's okay in that sense. And I think in combination with your security, you can get some high value off of it. Um, if you run this, I would run maybe one. You can definitely make an argument for two, but if you see it too much, then it's a little cloggy. So yeah, Magnetron is interesting tech choice. And finally, tech choice, Trident Revolver. Uh, this card is on play, uh, delete a Digimon with 6,000 DP or less, and then play a Tamer in your hand with 4 or less play cost without paying its memory cost. So essentially this is kind of like a tempo card, because you can delete a blocker, uh, aka Mechanorimon, and then play one of your Tamers from your hand for 6 memory. So you're probably going to be passing your turn, but you got off 2 cards in the span of that turn. So let's say uh, Marcus normally costs 4. You can say you can say that this card deletes a Digimon for two memory, and then you play the Marcus. So it's a pretty high value card if you can get it off like like that. Um, you, I think you would only play one of if you choose to play this. So it could, this could be like over Gravity Crush here. And finally, for there's one more tech card I do want to talk about. Um, well, actually two more. So there's Analog Youth. I keep trying to call it Analog Boy, but Analog Youth. Uh, two cost to play Tamer, search your deck top three, add a Digimon, and then when one of your level five or higher Digimon is deleted, so AKA your bond after your bond effect wears off at the end of the turn, or Skullgrey when it attacks and kills itself, uh, you can tap Analog Boy and then you gain a memory and hatch a egg to an empty slot in your breeding area. So it kind of like lets you up tempo a little bit and it doubles as a searcher. Um, if you have room for this card, I guess you could. Maybe you can play one over Gravity Crush, or you can somehow find a way to fit in a couple more. It is a good search card. It's kind of like Pot of Duality from Yu-Gi-Oh, if you guys remember that card. Except it actually gives you like a lot more tempo than that card ever did. So yeah, interesting card to think about. And the last tech I want to talk about, I know I said finally like three times, but this is for real the last tech I want to talk about, is uh, Delicate Plan. I don't think you need it in this deck. You can make an argument for it since, in theory, like you can go um, security plus one Greymon, Lightning Joust, and Delicate Plan and swing for three checks, and your opponent can't use any options they hit, which is interesting. But this deck already has a really good security control matchup, like on its own, uh, just because of the trash security effect. And you can just play a bunch of high value, low cost rookies and then just chip away at their security, and you have ways to out their Zork defeats if they hit them with Gaia Force. Um, so I wouldn't really worry too much about having to run Delicate Plan on this deck. I just don't think there's really that much room and you don't get as much value as you would in other decks that want to play that card. Alright, so that does it for my Agubond Bond of Bravery deck profile. 
uh, this is definitely a tier one deck and I think it competes just as well as Bond of Friendship and Jessmon for the best deck in the format slot. I think uh, those decks are all equally powerful and if you don't want to play either of those two decks, definitely consider this one. It's pretty cheap to build. I think the only expensive cards in this deck is maybe this promo Greymon and um, if you choose to run the promo Agumon instead of the starter deck Agumon. But other than that, uh, yeah, give this deck a shot. You will win games. For sure, you will win tournaments and you will make all your friends hate you when you beat them in two turns with this great one. Alright? GG's guys.